back to beyoungministry.blogspot.com and to another podcast out of the book of Ephesians. Tonight we're in Ephesians 5, 22 through 24, which reads, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. That's Ephesians 5, 22 through 24. In our text today, the Apostle Paul applies the previous teaching that he had given earlier in this chapter, and now he's applying it to the family. And uh, he, forget, he begins with the wife and her relationship with her husband. There's no relationship in which conflict is more widespread than the marriage. The enemy knows that the help to any society begins with the family. Therefore, he attacks the most important of human relationships. The laminin of any society is the workings of the Lord in the nuclear family. In verse 22, Paul turns his attention to the wife. God calls all believers to a life of submission, including wives, which is couched in our submission to he, to him. The key phrase here is, to the Lord. The wife is to submit to her husband because she is submitting to the Lord Jesus. The phrase, to the Lord, does not mean that the wife is to worship her husband as though he were the Lord, nor should she submit to someone who's treating her uh, in an ill way, like uh, abuse. Now, it means she is to yield to her husband and his servant leadership, and in such that way she is yielding to the Lord. As indicated in verse 23, the Lord has given to the husband the role of the head of the wife. The word used for head is kephale in the Greek. This role that God has given to husbands is that of servant leadership for his wife and their family. If the husband is being Christ-like, then the wife will have no problem submitting to his servant leadership. In verses 23 and 24, the apostle likens the husband's role to that of Christ in relationship to the church. Of course, this means that when the husband is laying down his life for his wife, she will find it easier to submit to his servant leadership. Yet God does not qualify his instructions to the wife with this caveat. She is to submit to her husband whether or not he is loving her like Christ loves the church. I think this underscores the, the utter value of a girl or a woman observing the guy that she may one day marry. She needs to observe how he relates to his mother and if he has any his sisters, because how he relates to them, the respect he shows them, will translate after marriage, after they are married. And it might not be for five years or ten years, but it will come forth. If he honors his mom, if he respects his mom, and if he has sisters, them as well, then that's a good sign that he's the type of guy she wants to marry. See, spiritual headship is not licensed for men to do what they want to do with their wives. It is empowerment from God to do what they ought to do, and that is lay down their lives for their wives. You see, the infrastructure that God's definition brings to our lives, our homes, and our society should never be taken lightly. <clears throat> Just as headship or servant leadership for the husband is his right to love the Lord and his wife, so the role of submission to her husband's leadership 
is her right to show her love for her Lord and her husband. Without the infrastructure of the Lord's definition of things, the family and the society will suffer, suffer great harm. If parents only knew how our relationship with one another, with husband and wife, impacts our kids more than any other relationship, we would take God's instructions to the family far more serious than we do. The relationship of a husband and wife reflect the relationship between the Lord Jesus and the church. The Lord Jesus does not choose his bride because she's lovely, but because he is. What a picture of what love should be. This type of love withstands the harshest of moments in any relationship, especially marriage. Finally, our ability to love our spouse parallels our ability to love God. C.S. Lutz put it well when he said, When I have learnt to love God better than my earthly dearest, I shall love my earthly dearest better than I do now. In so far as I learn to love my earthly dearest at the expense of God and instead of God, I shall not love my earthly dearest at all. When first things are put first, second things are not suppressed, but increased. We'll continue this tomorrow. Uh, with regard to what God says to the husband. But I trust this podcast, this blog is helpful to in your walk to you and your walk with the Lord. If you have any questions or comments, um, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.